have my snail curve here, which is uh, a nice illustration of the increment pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dissect this guy a little bit so you can see how it's made. That blue form is just made by sweeping this profile along this path. Just recreate it. And this path is simply uh, a spline by points that's hosted along these lines. So I just take my spline by point tool and I march it around each one of these guys to make that curve. And then this in turn is a loaded family, which if I go and take a look at this guy, the family is just a, a line with an angle parameter and a length parameter. And for every increment of this family, I've got an integer parameter. And that integer parameter drives each one of those angles and lengths. So I'm going to do a placement of one of these families, and then I'm going to change its integer, and it's going to percolate through what its angle and its length is. So I can go back and looking at this, I can see this nice spray. Maybe I want to make it half of this spray. Right now it's going through a whole 360 uh, revolution. And if I make this 30, I can go OK. And you can see that the increment changes slightly, that the angle changes slightly. If I load this back into my project, you can see now I've got half of the angle, and it just does half of the spray. So let's make one of these guys from scratch. I'm going to do a new family, and we can just do this in a mass family. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a reference line first. No 3D snapping for this. It's just a, a work plane hosted line. And I'm going to create an angular dimension for that guy. And I'm going to set the work plane to be that line. I'm going to draw a model line. And this just allows me to sort of separate what each thing is doing. So I'm going to have, this thing is going to have a length parameter. Let's just call it len. And this one's going to have an angular parameter. Let's call it ang. This is not great naming convention, but it's simple. And what I'm going to do is just flex these guys and make sure that they're working and they're all hooked up correctly. So I'm going to change this to 30. Everything moves. Make sure that the length is staying put. Everything seems to be working correctly. So I'm going to add one more parameter. And this is going to be my integer parameter. And I'm going to call this increment. And it's also going to be an instance. And what I need to do now is relate the increment to these lengths and angles. So I'm going to say that for every increment that I'm going to place, I want this thing to rotate, say, 15 degrees. I'm just going to copy this guy so I can get my degree symbol. So say I've got 15 degrees per increment. So that's going to be per uh, times increment. See, it pops to 15, and then I'm going to do, let's call it 5 feet for every increment. So it's going to be 5 feet times increment. If I apply that, you can see everything snaps to place. And that's all that there is going to be in my line. Now I'm going to make a new mass to place this in. I'm just going to load it into project. See, I've got it there on my tooltip. It's very small. Uh, and I'm just going to place it right at the origin. And now here's going to be the sort of tedious part of this, where I'm going to need to place a bunch of instances of these guys. So I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to start pasting a line to the same place. And we get this warning that is just telling me that I've got identical things in the same place, and I don't really care because I'm going to change this eventually. 
I'm just going to do this uh, a bunch of times. And again, this is the part that would be nice to sort of have more automation to. And uh, I'm actually in the middle of trying to write an API script for this, but I don't really know much about anything about writing uh, code, so it's going to probably take me a while. So if I select one of these guys, I can see that it has an increment of 1. And if I just change up to 2, we can see that it's actually just rotated out. It's got another 5 feet added to it and another, what did we say, 15 degree angle added to it. So I can just select this guy again and make this 3, 4, and once you get this set up, um, there's a lot of flexibility to it. There's just this sort of hassle of needing to go through and doing all of your instances. But you know, as you can see, unless you're doing, you know, hundreds, it's not going to be such a problem. So I've got seven, inc seven instances here of my line. And as I showed before, I can just go through and I can host uh, a spline by point to the ends of these guys or whatever else you might want to do. And now I can sweep geometry along it, do whatever. I can now go back into my family and I can change increments, for instance. Say I want it to be a whole lot larger. I can make it increment at 15 feet and I can make the spray sort of traverse more, uh, more space. So if I load this back in, I'm going to overwrite the values, and we're going to see this transform into this. And again, this is all based on just a, a very simple formulaic relationship between the increment and the angular change for each increment. And just for fun, I went in and changed my formula here, the length, to be a sine wave formula, so that the line will get longer and shorter and longer and shorter. And so I can just take the same family and I can load it back into the project. And so here I've got my snail curve still going on. And here are my, here's my existing family lines. And if I overwrite the existing version as parameter values, I'll get my sine wave curve, which is just beginning here where it's going, still doing its incrementing through 15 degree lengths, uh, 15 degree angles. But then the lengths are getting longer and then the sine waves kicking in and they're getting shorter again. So if I had more of these instances put down, it would you know, do sort of probably a, I think it would probably do something like a flower shape. Anyway, just to show the flexibility of once you get this thing set down and established.